This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, Southerners receive a dose of reality after basking in summer-like weather at the weekend. The Kiwi designers behind a world-leading bionic hand have set their next challenge. And Wyndham school pupils took the chance to go outside and learn about sustainable behaviour. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Holly Buchanan. Southerners have received a dose of reality today after basking in summer-like weather at the weekend. Snow and heavy rain has fallen in parts of the south including Queenstown and central Otago. Heavy snow began falling at around 4am in Queenstown, leaving parts of the resort without power. Up to 15 centimetres settled on the ground in some of the resort's suburbs. All schools and numerous daycare centres in the resort were closed and all flights scheduled to arrive at or depart Queenstown Airport were either delayed or cancelled. Heavy snow also fell in Wanaka and other parts of central Otago. Close to 50 centimetres fell at Cadrona Ski Field, making it the largest snowfall it's received this winter. The Remarkables and Coronet Peak Ski Field were also closed, while Treble Cone received a huge amount of snow. Snow and ice warnings for roads were in place for many parts of the south, including Alpine Passes, the Crown Range Road linking Queenstown and Wanaka, and the Kawadao Gorge. The Milford Road has stayed shut today due to heavy avalanche risk. The cold front is forecast to move across the South Island, bringing with it high winds, rain and significant snow for some areas. In central Otago, the south today. And two more children have been approached by a stranger in Dunedin. A Ravensbourne father says his nine-year-old son and a friend were walking together along Wanaka Street about noon on Saturday. He says the children say they were approached near Ravensbourne School by a man wearing a high-vis vest who asked to take their photo. The pair were alarmed by the approach and ran home. The number of reported suspicious approaches to children over the past two weeks now stands at five. No arrests have been made in relation to the reports. And the Kiwi designers behind a world-leading bionic hand have set their next challenge to create a much smaller version for children. David Lovegrove and the design team at Form Function in Christchurch are finalists at the upcoming Best Design Awards for their innovative Tasker bionic hand. And for one Dunedin man, their de dedication to keep pushing the boundaries has proved life-changing. Strong enough to crush a tennis ball, but delicate enough to grasp an egg without breaking the shell. The Tasker hand is the brainchild of Christchurch company Form Function. For Dunedin sculptor Gavin Wilson, the invention has been life-changing. I had a different bionic hand, which was from Scotland. So I had a socket that could be used. Um, so the guy asked me if I'd troll his hand for him. So I said yes, and uh, fantastic. Designers have spent thousands of hours improving the hand, which is a tiny motor, gearbox and clutch for each finger and two for its thumb. Wilson, who lost his hand six years ago after he put his arm in a shredding machine, has one of the most advanced versions of the Tasker hands, making everyday activities much easier. Um, same as simple things like eating a yogurt, peeling a banana, um, lighting a match, uh, putting toothpaste on your toothbrush, uh, dressing, uh, cleaning your hand. Um, oh, the list goes on. It's things that you just don't think about, you know. Sensors are activated by the muscles in his arm, so if he tenses them it will do one thing. If he flexes the muscles, the hand will change position. And importantly, the hand is completely waterproof. Yeah, it's, uh, you can wash with it. So, um, dishes, not that I do them. <laughs> dishes, washing cart, fishing, fantastic. Uh, and just, cl just cleaning it, and it will clean your hand. It's just, it, it can handle water, so not a problem. Wilson's bionic hand is worth $35,000 and the designers are now turning their attention to a much smaller version for children. The Tasker bionic hand is also a finalist in the Best Design Awards, the largest in Australasia, with the winner set to be announced this weekend in Dunedin the South today. Break the law or wait while traffic flows right past you. That's the choice many cyclists feel they're facing when using the new one-way cycle lanes. 
Cyclists have to wait through two phases of traffic lights at various intersections on the state highways if they miss a small window of opportunity. At at least five intersections along the path, recently installed lights give cyclists the right of way for about 10 seconds before turning motorists are given the right of way. It means cyclists who miss the green light have to sit through almost two entire light phases before they can ride through the intersection. Rather than waiting, some cyclists choose to ignore the red light and cycle through when there are no turning vehicles. Spokes Dunedin Chairman John Dean says the phasing is ridiculous and not useful for cyclists. The NZTA say the phasing of lights is something which will require more adjustments as the cycle lanes are completed and all the traffic signals are integrated. And Wyndham school pupils have been given the chance to venture outside the classroom and learn about sustainable behaviour. They've joined forces with staff from Fonterra's Edendale plant as part of the nationwide Keep New Zealand Beautiful campaign. Tidying up the Wyndham Township. These pupils from the local primary school learning what it takes to be environmentally responsible in a sustainable way. Hannah Furs of Fonterra led a team of workers from the nearby dairy factory at Evansdale to give the children a hand. So today we're at Wyndham School uh, collecting rubbish with the children here. Um, we've got a group of Fonterra employees here from Edendale supporting the day. Safety was the motto of the day with protective gloves being handed out to the young eco-warriors. Furs says the day out was a learning opportunity for the pupils. So it's a great chance to help teach the younger generations about sustainability. So we're um, doing this aligned with the Keep New Zealand Beautiful national campaign. The Keep New Zealand Beautiful program has a variety of corporate sponsored initiatives, encouraging public to combat the plague of discarded rubbish and unwanted graffiti around New Zealand. In Wyndham, for the South Today. And still to come on the South Today, we meet with recreational white baiters on the West Coast enjoying one of the best seasons in years. And the country's top freedivers test the limits of their abilities. New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Spring is here and it's time to get in the garden. Ready Lawn will take care of your lawn needs making Lawn Care a snap. They will install the perfect lawn while you plant your favourite flowers and vegetables. Call Ready Lawn today so you can enjoy the coming season. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. <laughs> When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community.
Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We offer Manage My Health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. Electrify NZ Dunedin sell quality European designed e-bikes with reliable componentry so that you too can wear the e-bike grin. Call in for your complimentary test ride today or book online. Find us at 249 Cumberland Street, phone 021 035 9820. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Welcome back. Aurora Energy could face a maximum fine up to $5 million after the Commerce Commission announced it's taking the company to court for failing to maintain its network. In a statement, the Commission says it relates to breaches of regulated quality standards by the Dunedin City Council-owned energy company in 2016 and last year. The Commission alleges Aurora underinvested in asset maintenance and renewal, leading to poles, cables and transformers being in a deteriorated condition. And recreational whitebaiters on the west coast are pleased with a high number of the translucent delicacy being caught. And the region's rivers appear to be delivering one of the best seasons in years. Large catches of little fish. A couple of experienced locals happy to share tales of whitebaiting on the Taramakau River. They say the season has been a bumper one so far. Probably a little bit better than um, it has been of years, I think. It's, um, the bait is absolutely beautiful. It's, oh, it's clear close. as, and um, <laughs> yeah, so we're quite happy. O'Connor says these crystal clear waters are helping to provide good sized catches of quality fish. And fellow whitebaiter Michael McGrath bought the stand a few years ago and says conditions this year are fabulous. Well the season started off pretty good. It, uh, we've had a lot of fine weather. This is the first bit of a fresh we've had in the, had in the river, which by now we've normally had a good sized flood. It's oh, holding up. There is a little bit of bait around. McGrath says other white baiters on the river are also reporting good catches of the aquatic delicacy. On the west coast, the south today. Their bodies shook and their faces turned blue as New Zealand's best free divers kept holding their breath in Queenstown over the weekend. And for one competitor, it was a chance to show off her home region to her fellow free divers. Just some of the competitors at the three-day freediving New Zealand Pool Nationals competition at Alpine Aqualand Pool in Frankton. Organiser and competitor Catherine Nevitt held her breath for seven minutes and seven seconds. I was hoping for over seven. Yep. I would have liked a bit more, but the, I'm organising the competition as well, so um, it took me a little bit longer to kind of settle down and I mm. just kind of ran out. Yeah. In static apnea, divers hold their breath for as long as they can while lying face down on the water. Competitors say the sport offers a mental challenge different from the physical demands of other sports. We've never held a um, free diving competition in the South Island before, so this is the first time and it's um, great to bring all my friends down here and see yeah. where I'm living and what we're doing here. Yeah. Never who hails from Arrowtown and is a former world champion and world record holder in various disciplines, says it's great to have the competition in Queenstown. We've got 26 competitors, which is awesome for us. Um, everyone's on board and the officials are helping out with the organisation, so we've yeah. been able to step back and everyone's pretty happy and enjoying the beautiful Queenstown weather. And for the record, Titahi Bay's Guy Brew held his breath for 8 minutes and 11 seconds in Queenstown, the South today. And after the break on the South today, Ash Burton weather turns it on and crowds turn out to watch a series of rugby league games on the weekend. And dozens of off-road racers battle it out in the 2018 New Zealand Off-Road Racing Championships Southern Dirt Fest. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. 
Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. The Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We offer Manage My Health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. For more than 50 years, Roslyn Mowers and Heating have been selling and servicing quality lawn mowers and outdoor power equipment. Bring your mower, chainsaw, garden equipment in for repair or service and you go in the draw to win a Husqvarna petrol line trimmer. See you in store soon. Active interior design in Mornington are the curtain and blind experts. The team can even advise you on outdoor products and will ensure that everything is perfect. For interior design with flair, call Active to book your free in-home consultation or call into the showroom in Mornington. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Motor Trade Finance proudly brings you Rural Delivery. A look at the places and faces behind New Zealand agriculture. Tuesday evenings 8.30, repeating Saturday morning at 8 and Sunday afternoons 4.30. Welcome back. There was a showcase of rugby league at Ashburton's Robilliard Park on Saturday when players, both young and not so young, came together for a series of games. Ashburton Barbarians Rugby League Club hosted the day, which began with a series of junior games. A big crowd of supporters turned out on a hot day to watch the budding rugby league stars of the future perform. Teams from Timaru, Christchurch and Rolleston were represented, as well as three newly formed teams from Ashburton. The first of two senior games kicked off at 1pm and featured the Chertsey Oilers and Timaru Outlaws. There were plenty of tries in the game, with the Outlaws eventually winning by 42-22. to That was followed by the Ashburton Barbarians taking on the Country Cowboys. In a close physical contest, the home team was pipped 34-32. Several categories of off-road racers battled it out on a country property near Kurau over the weekend. The annual New Zealand Off-Road Racing Championships Southern Dirt Fest saw 42 cars competing in a short course event on Saturday, which was followed with an endurance race on Sunday. We're outside Kurau in the um, Waitaki Valley and this is a new track for the championship. It's been used for club events, it's on the Slee property and they have very kindly basically terraformed a track for us that is probably one of the best in the championship. We've got three or four here from the North Island, absolutely raving about the track. Um, fast enough for the big cars but technical enough for everyone else as well. Uh, probably just like the adrenaline rush, you know. Okay. We, I'm not all about like winning, I'm just like out there to have fun. Okay. Yeah. And the dirt and stuff, it's pretty good. Um, well, we're always competing, we've been competing in them since we're in the J classes, so we've always been like trying to beat each other and take each other out. <laughs> 
these short course events are all between 1 and 1.5 kilometres long. That lets it be a stadium type event where spectators can see all of the action and there's always a lot of action. Um, the other half of this weekend tomorrow is the 200 kilometre enduro which is, uses this track but it's a 20 kilometre lap so 10 laps out on the, out on the sleeve farm to decide the winner of the whole weekend. Most guys won't stop for fuel, they won't basically stop until the chequered flag. If you have to stop then you're at a disadvantage for the guys who can do that whole distance flat out on one tank of gas. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The end of the golden weather struck Wanaka and Queenstown overnight and into this morning cutting power to much of Queenstown. The Kiwi designers behind a world leading bionic hand have set their next challenge to create a much smaller version for children. And Wyndham school pupils have been given the chance to venture outside the classroom and learn about sustainable behaviour by cleaning up parts of gore. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Philip Songwell. Yes, hi Holly. I, I thought um, we'd start today on the opinion page. Okay. We haven't done that for a while. Yeah. Peter Lyons who writes uh, mostly on economic matters has been travelling uh, in yeah. Spain and it's really quite a, a, a poignant piece. He, talks about the joys of travelling and doing the Camino walk, especially as a, he describes himself as a, an older man, overweight, and uh, one who, whose eyesight is minimal. Okay. So you okay. Know, he's always got a... Yeah. Jim Sullivan's also on that page tomorrow. He always has a wry take on things. But this time it's about the steepest street. Ah, he suggests yes. Falcon Street in uh, Roslyn, you know, the one that goes yes, down to yeah. Kaiko Valley. That's right through, yeah. He reckons they should get a bulldozer in there and just give it a couple <laughs> of extra couple of degrees, <laughs> and that would be right. Um, back one page is the editorial page. Uh, editorial tomorrow is about regional council and water issues and minimum flows in those important rivers in central Otago. Right. This is a big issue and not easily solved mm. uh, and uh, conflicting interests. So. Uh, readers uh, who want to be well informed should look at that. Okay. Uh, there, of course, is stories and pictures from the big snow in Wanaka and Alexandra. Uh, there's material about Aurora that the Lines Company that the council owns and the, um, uh, the, the claims of the historic underfunding and maintenance and the yeah. Commerce Commission um, taking action with charges on that front. Okay, yep. And right. on the sports pages, uh, Steve Hepburn, the... the um, Sports editor has a wee go at the issue that people are talking about in the rugby world. Uh, what do New Zealand and New Zealand teams have against the drop goal? Ah, right. Well, a very good combination there. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Molmap. Beginning with tonight's southern view, taken of snow at Queenstown's Lake Front. Looking at the situation after today's cold temperatures, fine weather is on the way tomorrow and some milder days later in the week as airflow tends west to northwest. Starting at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport, you're in for cloudy weather with a high of 13 degrees. Across to the northeast now, Nelson, cloudy with 17 degrees, Blenheim, a few clouds and a bit chillier with 13. And to Canterbury, Kaikoura, cloudy and 12. Christchurch, partially cloudy and 13. And Ashburton, also expecting cloud and 13 degrees. Looking at the southern towns, Balclutha, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden can all expect moderate westerlies, some cloud and highs of 12 to 14 degrees. And moving westwards to the central lakes, Alexandra, Queenstown and Wanaka can expect light winds, clear skies and highs between 11 and 12. But expect grey skies in Tiano with moderate westerlies with a high of 13. Up to the north now, Omarama and Twizel, light winds, clear skies and a high of 12. Similar along the coast for Omaru and Timaru with highs of 13 degrees for you both. And in, the, in Dunedin, it'll be fine tonight with northerlies and an overnight low of 3. A fine Tuesday with mostly sunny skies and light winds, 13 and a low of 4. Warmer on Wednesday with northerly winds and high cloud increasing, a high of 17 and a low of 8. 
and in Invercargill it should be fine with cold tonight with 3 the overnight low. Sunny periods at first tomorrow with a high of 14 and showers developing on Wednesday looking at a high of 15 degrees. And that's all from the team here at the South today. For the latest news from the southern region, head online and follow us on Facebook, YouTube at channel 39.co.nz and at odt.co.nz. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.